Hi guys, Korean Movie Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a 2013 Korean action thriller movie called Secretly, Greatly. This movie tells the story of a North Korean undercover agent who lives as an idiot in a small village in South Korea. As he spends his time peacefully, he starts to care for the villagers and plans to betray the North. However, the North doesn't let him escape freely and plans to execute him. So, what makes him change his mind? Will he be able to run away from the North? Let's find it out. One is a high-ranking military personnel in the Black Ops Special Unit of North Korea. He is tasked to infiltrate South Korea and build up his cover there, to one day reunify Korea. Two years later, he has successfully infiltrated South Korea and disguises himself as a village idiot. He works as a shopkeeper for Granny, to keep his cover. There, he is paid $200 a month which he plans to give to his mother in North Korea. To further ensure his cover, he deliberately leaves a snot mark every day, falls down in public more than three times a day, and urinates or defecates in public every month. Every day, he works at the Granny's shop and interacts with the villagers. Even though he acts as an idiot, the villagers are kind to him in their own way. In the village, he befriends the professor, another North Korean spy who also has been dormant for 16 years. They are concerned about their dormant years as they start to forget about their real identity. Even the professor starts to enjoy his mundane life in the village, free from hunger and harsh military training. One day, the professor heard that his mother passed away last winter and regrets his dormant years very much. One who joined the unit to feed his mother also misses her so much and can't wait to return home. He often writes letters to her, but keeps all of them hidden in hope that he will be able to give it to her one day. During one of his visits, he hears that a singer wannabe has just come to the village. While he is training to keep his body in check, he is visited by the rumored individual. Turns out, he is Herang, his teammate in the same unit who is also a bastard son of North Korea's military general. He is also sent as a sleeper agent and disguises himself as a singer. He explains that he is sent as a substitute for one, as he could have betrayed their nation in the past two years. One day, a child wakes one up during the night. He says that his brother went missing when he was going out to pee. He checks his pee trail and uses his skills to track the kid down. All of the villagers are also outside looking for the kid. With his sharp hearing, he hears the kid's voice and chases after it. He grabs a villager's clothes to cover his identity. Finally, he is able to find the boy who visits another man's house asking for cookies. However, the villagers shout at him, calling him a pervert. Turns out, he took the wrong disguise while chasing after the boy's voice. Despite being surrounded, he is able to get away and keeps his cover intact. Meanwhile, South Korea's National Intelligence Service or NIS becomes aware of the presence of North Korea's spies, as a lot of North Korea's defectors have been killed. The NIS are afraid of the unit, as the unit is a black ops and now is controlled only by one general, due to a sudden power shift. Suddenly, one of the NIS agents is killed by an unknown sniper. The NIS deduces that the sniper is also one of the black ops, so they create a unit specifically to overcome the rumored North Korea spies, under the leader's command. At night, when one is thinking about his mother, the mysterious sniper comes and aims a gun at him. The sniper is sent by North Korea to make sure that no defectors live peacefully in the South. Seeing how one is loyal to his country, the sniper leaves. One tries to chase him, but the sniper manages to run away. After some time, one successfully tracks him down and even identifies him. The mysterious sniper is Hejin, the youngest spy in the unit who joins the Black Ops due to his admiration for one. Hejin is tasked to disguise himself as a high school student and carry out his mission of killing the North's defectors. And so, Won, Herang, Hejin, the three of them start to live their peaceful lives in the village. Since the villagers are kind to them, they often secretly help them chasing away the bad guys who come to disturb the people's lives. One day, Granny is almost hurt if not for Won saving her. Won is mad and tries to fight the thug for real, but Granny stops him. He is shocked to hear the response, and asks himself whether she actually knew his cover all along. Then, he orders Hedgin to confront the thugs, on behalf of Granny. Despite their great number, the thugs are beaten by him. 
One day, the residents gather and the three spies are also invited. There, they share warm meal, sing, and laugh together. One enjoys the time, as he is remembered about his harsh past in the north. He secretly loves the place but is afraid to change and defect his nationality. Meanwhile in the north, the army general is aware of the NIS's agenda of capturing the spies. He plans to execute all of them as traitors of the revolution, to keep the unit's secrecy. However, the chief persuades him to let them commit suicide and die with honor. He also promises to kill the traitors who doesn't carry out the suicide mission. And so, the mission is sent to all of the remaining spies in the south. One is surprised and excited to accept his first mission in two years, but is shocked upon reading it. Both Herang and Hejin are also confused as they haven't carried out any mission to build up their name. In some other places, the spies start to kill each other and commit suicide. As they kill themselves, they hail Korea's upcoming reunification. The three spies also get into a fight, as Hejin plans to kill the other two for not carrying out the mission. After some time, one orders Hejin to kill him. However, Hejin does not have the heart to do so and leaves. On the other hand, the NIS are aware of the spy's last mission. The leader who is also an ex-member of the North's Black Ops swears to save the three surviving members, despite his director's order to execute them. Then, the NIS agents are sent out to tail and capture the three remaining spies. The leader also confronts one, and tries to convince him to betray the North. Suddenly, Hejin comes to help him. Hejin chases after the leader who is trying to get away. After some time, he is cornered and held captive by the NIS. The NIS immediately takes out a tracking device which was planted by the North in his body. Meanwhile, the chief is coming to the South to execute the remaining spies. One who is convinced to betray his country, readies himself. He is done being a fool, and gives advice to the villagers who have been kind to him. He even helps one of them to find her long-lost son who has been given up for adoption by her parents. Then, he also bids his farewell to Granny who has been sheltering him for two years. Surprisingly, Granny has suspected him of being a spy ever since she saved him two years ago. She also gives him a banknote and says that he will need it back home. And so, one departs from the village with a heavy heart. Then, one and Herang join forces to confront the chief and his men. They know from the NIS leader that there is a GPS present in their body. So, they plan to lure the chief to fight outside the village. Meanwhile, Hejin also plans to ally with the NIS in helping Won fighting the North, as he cares about Won more than his nationality. Finally, Won and the chief meet one another as enemies after two years. Won immediately asks about his mother, but chief keeps on evading the question and fights him. Won wins the fight, and holds the chief at gunpoint, but he hesitates to shoot him. Suddenly, he is stabbed in the back and falls down the window. Unfortunately, the kids from the village see him. The chief and his men shoot at them to kill the witnesses. Luckily, Herang comes to the rescue with a car. With the help of the NIS, they manage to flee from the chief. Meanwhile, the NIS and the chief are shooting at one another in the village. After some time, Won and Herang arrive in an abandoned building to meet the professor who has smuggled out Won's guns. However, the professor and some other spies frame them and plan to turn them into the chief, so that they can return to the north as heroes. They point the guns at them, but unbeknownst to them that the guns have been emptied by Won. Finally, they ready themselves for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Both Won and Herang are more skilled than the rest of them, as they have been trained for combat ever since they were very young. Even with the great difference in their number, Won and Herang successfully cripple the spies one by one. After the fight, Won finds out from Professor that his mother has been killed by the North ever since he joined the unit. He is so devastated after hearing the news, and cannot get back to his feet. Suddenly, snipers from the North shoot at them. The Chief and the NIS also arrive to join the final brawl. Hejin frees himself and takes out the North snipers, to let the NIS enter the building. After some time, Won and Herang are cornered on the rooftop. There, they confront the chief and his men once more. Despite his injuries, Won still manages to defeat all of the North. Herang is stabbed in the abdomen and cannot fight any longer. Finally, the showdown between Won and the chief breaks out. They fight on par for some time, before strangling one another. 
the chief gets out of the lock and punches Wan several times. When things are getting ugly for Wan and Herang, the NIS finally arrives and breaks the status quo. Suddenly, Hejin reveals himself and holds the chief at gunpoint. The chief is cornered and brings out a bomb to stop Hejin from shooting. He plans to carry out his mission and take down the three of them with him. Seeing this, Herang gets up and pushes the chief over the edge, resulting in him sacrificing himself to save the other two. Seeing that the storm has passed, the NIS starts their mission to arrest the remaining two. Leader stands between them and tries to negotiate. However, one who is still devastated after hearing his mother's death, doesn't plan to either flee or turn himself in. He remembers about the bank note that Granny gave him. He cries as he finds out that Granny has given him all of her life savings. Hejin shoots at the NIS to chase them away, but they retaliate and shoot him several times. One protects him from further gunshots and they fall down the building together. In the end, Wan and Hejin die together, as they remember their dream of being born as ordinary men living in a peaceful country. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.